figure the road I travel don't gravel that probably baffling label scribble on paper they want to shackle it I own my masters and roars as you can't raffle it wrist drip like a mango fingertip like I'm Thanos knocking those down no bangles without a tango tailor made walk with a limp them bands is heavy I need a brace I am money I guess the world is just a safe combination needed not a coca key I'm the extra lighter on the dresser I know you need it smoking not the competition for and we undefeated what you heard, what you heard, let you heard, we eatin' talking by extra with a splash, extra acting bad, pull a like parades on parades, extra with a slab, pay what it call for the tail, extra with the band, young Chris a king, better add extra on the I go extra to be great. I go extra for the fam, I go extra for the cake. I got extras on the plate. I go extra every day, I got extras on the way. How much? Extra extra. How much? Extra extra. How much extra extra? How much extra extra? Tonight, from FedEx Field in Landover, Maryland, it's the NFC Divisional Round Playoffs on EA Sports. Taking on the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. For my money, it's the best time of the year. Playoff football time as postseason action descends upon FedEx Field just outside of D.C. Ahead will decide the second entrant to next week's NFC title game as we've got a great one in store between the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Washington Commanders. As the postseason continues here on EA Sports, we're pleased to bring it to you. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gauden. And who has the edge here? You got one side that had some extra rest, but another comes in off a win last week in the wild card round. And it's funny, depending on which team you are, you say that that's an advantage. You'll take the rest, you'll take the week off, get your guys healed up a little bit and ready to go. But that team that's coming in off of a win last week, they're really excited to keep playing. They feel like they are hot and ready to go. the fourth and final ticket to the conference championship round. We'll know soon enough as we are underway here on a January afternoon. And they will elect to not bring this one out as our first drive will begin at the 25. So out come the Bucks now for their first drive. And they will be led out by their second year quarterback. For a guy still in his second year in the NFL, this is obviously a big spot for him to try and fill. Able to engineer the victory in the wild card round last weekend. That's got to give him confidence, and it's got to elevate the confidence of his teammates as well. But as he said after the win, 
Things are only going to get tougher from there. He understands the situation he's in. He understands what's ahead of him in this one. carry for Leonard Fournette and he is met quickly in the backfield down he goes folded like a lawn chair it'll be a loss of a couple on the play so now third down coming up oftentimes when you see a running back get bunched up in the backfield it's usually because the defensive tackle is eating up blockers for others to make the play not in this case This defense looking for an early stop. This is third down and six. Looking to throw. And that's complete. It's Chris Godwin. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. He had six catches in the wild card win, and that's his first one here in the divisional round, and it's a first down. But well, that's what you're looking for when you're wanting to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. On second down, here's Fournette. He'll be taken down at the 48 for a pickup of two yards. A couple extra tight ends in the formation here as they line up third and two. Back to throw. And he cannot avoid the pressure as the Washington pass rush gets home. Jonathan Allen, he's the culprit, causes a loss of five, and it brings up fourth down. It seemed like he kept going through those progressions, and I thought he might dump that underneath, but he couldn't get rid of the football in time. And I have to wonder if he was thinking while he was back there, I wish there were a lot less progressions on this play, just someone that I can dump the ball to and get it out of my hands. Fourth down, so Jake Camarda is out there. And a great job on special teams to down it, as this will be marked out inside the five-yard line. So the special teams penalty cost some yardage there as they come out on first and ten. This is Brown going up the middle. Without the previous penalty, that would have been a first down. Instead, it's just a gain of 10. So not quite out of danger just yet. Still backed up a bit, but only need a few inches here on second down. And he'll get it up a little shy of the 15. They'll spot him down at the 14-yard line. They keep it on the ground. Again, it's Brown. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. Back to throw. Rich. Open man is the tight end, John Bates. They'll run on third down with Brown. And he's able to get the first here as he's taken down at the 25. Okay, 
operating from the gun. Rich can't get away, and he's taken down. Shaquille Barrett from that outside linebacker spot gets in there. It's a loss of nine. After the sack, it's second and 19, and the road gets a bit tougher from here. Looking to throw. Rich to the right side and complete to Thomas. They'll get him to the ground at the 20, following a pickup of four. A long way to go here on third down for the eighth play of the drive. Back to throw. Rich, and that's going to be incomplete. The contact there enough to jar that ball free, and it brings up fourth down. On fourth down, the punt team is on as this is sent away. 47-yard punt, a return of four. And the Bucs will get ready to go on offense. So out come the Bucs now. And work with me here. Is this overhyped or not? You've got a warm weather team on the road in January, and it's cold. What's, what's the deal? Is that a factor or is it not a factor? I think a lot of it depends on the personality of your head coach and how you prepare for things. And, and some things you just can't prepare for. If you're coming from a warm weather site, you can't make it cold enough like it is here in this ball game. But what you can do is just tell the guys, dress for the weather and then play like we always play. And as the game goes along, typically those guys out there playing, you warm up enough that it really shouldn't affect you quite the same way. Now, if that's all you talk about, if, that, if you put that in the heads of your players, oh, it'll affect them in a big way. And second and ten, he'll look to throw again. He's got Otten. And a gain of four gets him right to the midfield stripe. On third down, he'll drop to throw. Evans has it left side. And he is going to have a box first down by about a yard as they find a way to convert there on third down and five. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area, so you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Fournette, a first down carry. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. The last run got a couple. Here's second and eight. They'll look to throw here. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. Play number seven coming on this drive. It's third and inches. He'll drop to throw. Now that'll be tipped and intercepted. Picked off by Benjamin St. Juiced. And he will bring this one back. An interception return for the Commanders touchdown. Well, for the offense, it looked like that drive had the makings of something good. They were starting to hit a groove, but the defense clearly had other ideas, not only to force the turnover, but to handle the scoring themselves. Yeah, no panic in their eyes, was their partner? Think about it this way. A Hall of Fame coach once told me the best characteristic he liked out of his teams was that they didn't flinch. This group, they got pushed back in an early series, kept their composure, and made a big play that swung the momentum their way. Point after here, coming up. And the kick is good, and the Commanders out to a 7-0 lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six, and now the kick is away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. 
Now remember they were just out here a moment ago through the pick six so we'll see if they can take better care of the football this go around. Yeah, and sometimes partner I think it's almost better that you just throw the pick six and you come right back out on the field. You're not over on the sidelines dwelling for it for very long. You're not hearing everyone say, oh, hey, you'll get them next time. Hey, don't worry about it. All that stuff just goes right out the window. You're right back out on the field with a chance to atone. They'll operate from the 32-yard line here, second and three. A shotgun give to Fournette. Call it a gain of three, but not enough to move the sticks. It'll be third and about a foot or two. They'll try and run for it with Fournette. And he's got the first before he's brought down at the 39-yard line. It's a gain of four there, and it gives him a new set of downs. So from the 39 now, they'll come up on a first and 10. They'll drop to throw. He'll get that complete to Albert O. It'll go down as a gain of six, and it'll be second down. They'll set up a throw. Steps away to his left. And he'll slide to a halt here. Still a little shy of the first down marker. Heavy set out there on third and one. Inside handoff now to Fournette. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. And that run wasn't just for a first down. That was for some confidence. They've had a tough day moving the ball on the ground this entire game. I think after that one, they'll feel a little bit better about themselves, and now they've got more downs to try and get it done. Two first downs have them up near midfield now on first and ten. Shotgun handoff now for Love. And he carries this one past the midfield stripe and into commander territory. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. They're going to look to throw. He finds his target. It's Evans. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. They'll look to throw here on first down. And he slides and covers up at the end as he's going to be able to pick up decent yardage. He'll get five out of the scramble. It's second down. Now back to throw. He completes this to Russell Gage. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington 16. 17 yards is the pick up there for number 17. I tell you what, it looks like he's shaking off that pick six just fine. It's not just defensive backs that have to have short memories. Quarterbacks utilize that as well. A much more confident throw right there. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Straight ahead running. Here's Love. He will push his way down to about the 14. After one, seven nothing on EA Sports. Second and eight coming up. They'll set up to throw. This will be caught just inside the 10. They'll wind up getting seven on the play, and they'll be faced with a third and inches.
He'll look to throw. And he's into the end zone for a Tampa Bay touchdown. A six-yard touchdown run. And the Bucs are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Not the first time on this drive we saw him take matters into his own hands, and this time he finishes things off with a touchdown run. You're not going to be happy with me, but I think he took matters into his own feet, didn't he? No. Oh. <laughs> Davis from the top rope. <laughs> I like it. The thing that they'll be looking at is a spot of the football, and uh, this is always such a tough one for officials to get exactly right. Not just because of how fast the game's going, but just trying to get the right sight line to the football, that's not always easy. We'll see what they decide here. So that challenge is successful one. So first and goal and a chance to make amends for the earlier pick six. He'll look to throw. Steps away. And he's into the end zone. Touchdown, Buccaneers. Punching it in from a yard away. And the Bucs are an extra point away now from tying this ball game. Certainly there are good things about quick strike offenses that score fast. But a long drive can also work to your advantage as well. In so many ways, Brandon, because number one, you get them tired, but the big one is mentally. They can't figure out how to slow you down, how to get off the field, how to get the ball back. They go to the bench wondering, what are we going to do next time in order to stop those guys? Extra point attempt to follow here. It's up and good, and we're tied at seven here in quarter number two. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. This fielded right at the goal line. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. Now Washington going to retake the field for drive number two. A last series for him, a little disappointing, forced to punt. And now they'll try to do better here and come away with some points as they begin this drive, first and 10. Throwing to start the drive. Rich, and Thomas has it. Now the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. to throw on second down. Rich, and he'll go right back to Thomas, complete again. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. An inside give, Brown, and he's able to get across midfield and down into Buccaneer territory. Eight yards the gain on that last run. Here's second and a couple. Looking to throw, Rich, and down he goes, a Buccaneer sack. Shaquille Barrett able to drop him that time for his second sack of the evening. He only gave them an instant to react. It was a classic case of if you blink, you missed him. Off of the line and to the quarterback in just a couple of seconds. Running back only had a moment to react and attempt to throw a block. The threat of a second straight punt to start the game is looming as they come up third and ten. Back to throw. Rich over the middle. It's Thomas. And they'll get this across the midfield stripe, but still winding up short of the first down. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that's going to make it fourth down. Way on fourth down is sent out to punt. Okay. 
And now where will the side judge stop his walk? That's the question. He says it crossed out of bounds at about the 17-yard line. Now the Buccaneer offense gets set to take over. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. Sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. They'll look to throw. Looking for Godwin and he's got him complete. So five yards here, five on the play, and it's second down. On the give, this is their fullback. Just a couple on the pickup there, and now it's third down. From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Open man, it's Jalen Darden. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 34-yard line. Excellent play there on third down. Give them 25 yards. From Commander's territory now, it's first and 10 at the 34. Back to throw here. He completes it to Evans. And he'll be marked down right at the 20-yard line. zone now they'll look to throw he's going to have the hook up to gauge and he's going to be brought down at about the 16. Well, now a carry here for their fullback and he'll take this one down near the 15. The offense on third down tonight they've been very good five for seven thus far this is third and four forced out to his left and he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. The commander's defense holds, and that'll bring up fourth down. Well, it's been a tough go for him. These guys have been driving down the field, but defensively, once they got their backs to the goal line, turned up the pressure, that's going to lead to a fourth down. Well played. And now the Tampa Bay field goal unit comes out here. This from 32 yards away. And this one is right through. And they take the lead here now at 10 to 7. So unable to convert for the touchdown inside the red zone, but they do come away with three. Yeah, it's a 32 yarder. That's essentially an extra point nowadays, right? Because it's 33 as a general rule for these guys. So it should be a simple kick. But you know what's really strange nowadays? When they miss an extra point, I think they carry that with them longer than missing a field goal because an extra point's supposed to be automatic. Absolutely, and I would think even field goals inside of 30 yards, even though they're substantially shorter than a PAT, it, it just has a different feel, doesn't it? A different it? feel, a different vibe. That's what I get from all the kickers I talk to. They always say, if I miss an extra point, that's the one that bothers me more. A good gain on first has him set up with second and just a couple of inches now from the 29. They give it to Brown, and he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Looking to throw. Rich. 
Oh, the Buccaneer pressure too much. Down he goes. Shaquille Barrett bringing the pressure yet again. That's his third sack here tonight. Well, obviously the pass rush gets the glory and the statistics on this play, but the coverage, they deserve a ton of credit too. Denied open windows, erased the quarterback's targets one by one. Everywhere he looked, someone was covered. Only a matter of time before someone got there to bring him down. Sacks, a growing theme in this first half. This is second and long. They'll give this up the middle to Brown. The broken tackle couldn't create a ton of space. He'll be taken down just beyond the 35-yard line. Pitch. Oh, that's into a sea of bodies, and it's intercepted. Picked up by Jamel Dean. And the Buccaneers are going to take possession of the football. And I think this is a situation where a quarterback coach in the sideline is going to talk to a signal caller and say, listen, it's third and long, and it's still early in the game. Let's not force things here. If we don't feel good about it, let's just check something down and pump the football. And the Buccaneers getting ready to go as they take the field. And they'll have good field position here following the interception and a chance to build on their lead as they start with a first and ten. Now a play fake here on first down. That is caught. It's Chris Godwin. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. A good pick up there, 22. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, get out there, stop the offense. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. From the 13 now, they work on first and 10. That's complete. It's Okuebunam. Call it a gain of three on the play, and it'll be second down. It's vitally important to wrap him up immediately because if you let that big guy get ahead of steam up, boy, then you've got real trouble trying to get him down. But they're able to hold him to a short gain on first down. Here's a second and seven. And he's brought down. Give him 10 that time, escaping the danger, running with it, and picking up a first down. fullback try and take him home and he's in touchdown Buccaneers it's a one yard touchdown run as his guys are able to extend their lead well Charles after the first quarter was just complete disaster for them everything has flipped I mean it's 180 degrees in the other direction now here in quarter two championship effort right there how about them marching almost the length of the field, coming through on their final opportunity to get the win? This is one that this team will remember forever, as well as their fans. The extra point splits the uprights, and his guys will take a 10-point lead. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. And they'll put up the stop sign there as his guys will get it at the 25. Here comes the commander's offense back onto the field. And you work so hard during the regular season to earn that buy to go to the divisional round fresh. Well, maybe they're too fresh because they've come out here pretty flat. And how many times have we seen it? And let's go to other sports now. Let's go to basketball, baseball, those ones where the playoffs are a series. And you see teams who were playing before versus the team that had the bye, and they take them on. And how many often does that team that been? He's got a man complete. Touchdown, Washington. Terry McLaurin, 75 yards. And the Commanders are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. 
And that is how you retaliate after getting scored on one play, big pass downfield, and you hit the end zone. Almost feels like two boxers just throwing haymakers at each other, doesn't it? One connects with a big one, the other comes right back. Okay, I'll show you. And they attacked right back on the first play of the drive and hit them big. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead's down to a field goal at 17-14. One of the shortest drives you'll ever see. One play, 75 yards, six points. And this taken in at the goal line. And he'll get it up just past the 20 as his guys will go to work at the 21-yard line. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. They're starting to put some space here. You know, the first quarter, they didn't look so hot offensively. This second quarter, though, they've looked really good. They've jumped in the saddle in a big way now, and now they're in full gallop. I mean, before, <laughs> kind of cantering around a little bit, right, trying to feel their way, not getting done what they wanted to. But somehow they put it together with play calling, execution, and now there's a pretty big gap. And they'll look to make that gap even bigger here. Second and five. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. At the 35. They picked up five yards last time. Now they double it and get 10 here. And now whistles here and a flag down. Looked like someone got going a little early. So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. A false start backs him up five, first and 15. Well, they've gone to their fullback quite a bit. He'll get it again. And he'll be tackled just past the 35 at the 36. And again, they'll go right back to their fullback. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 45. Eight yards on the ground there, and now they're looking at a third and two. A reminder, as we did all through the regular season, we'll check in with Jonathan Coachman at halftime. He'll have highlights and analysis of this first half of play. And he is going to have the Buccaneers first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. That's a big conversion there on third down because they did not want to give the ball up here late in the half. They'd love to take the clock all the way down and score. This will definitely help the cause. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Throw right side, taken in by Godwin. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. Second and three. And this is caught by Evans. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. Now the Bucks are going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. So from the 36 now, first and 10. They'll stick with the passing game as he looks to throw. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 27. Now another timeout called for by the offense as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. Back to throw again. Over the middle, it's complete. And they're going to have another first down here as the tackle's made at Washington's 18. A nice pick up there, 10 yards. Well, this has certainly been a nice drive with the way they've spread the football around. Here, they even get the fullback involved in the passing game. That's got to cause a lot of consternation on the defensive side. You've got to cover him, too. That makes things really difficult. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's actually utilized more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it, but he's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put yeah, there. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there. You might out of a smaller back. The Bucks forced to use their third and final timeout as it'll come with 15 seconds to play in the first half. They'll 
Look to throw again. Quick hitter here. It's complete. Oh, he's brought down. And remember here, no timeouts left. They got to get to the line quick. So we've come upon halftime here in this NFC Divisional Round matchup. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome in, everyone, to our EA Sports Halftime Report. Let's get you caught up on what's going on around the NFL. But first, let's take a look back to Saturday's NFC Divisional Round game. And it's the San Francisco 49ers who are moving on to the next round as they knock off the Green Bay Packers. Meanwhile, in our game, we're set up for a terrific second half. So to find out who will advance to the NFC title game, let's send it back out to Brandon God. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. Fields it right around the goal line. And they'll start this drive just across the 30. Pretty nice work on the return. The Washington offense ready to go to begin the third quarter. And yeah, Charles, yeah, that had to be an interesting locker room at halftime. This is a team that's had so much success this year. Haven't really had to deal with a lot of adversity at halftime, to be honest. But now here they are with their playoff lives on the line. And I think when you're alluding to that interesting locker room, you're just wondering, how are they handling that bit of adversity that they're seeing right now? Because I think this is a team that has to look to lean on the veterans at this point. We know we're better than this. We proved it all season. Let them disseminate that confidence through the locker room. But this opening drive, it'll be an important one for them to give them a little jolt of confidence moving forward. On first and ten, Rich over the middle, open is Thomas. Call it a gain of six on the play, and that will bring up second down. Operating from the gun. Rich throwing it Terry McLaurin's way again, and he's got it. So from Buccaneer territory now, it's first and 10 at the 42-yard line. Shotgun handoff to Brown here. And he gets it inside the 35 and just shy of the 30. It's a first down for Washington on a pickup of 11. That one definitely helps as they try to push the ball down the field here, trailing early in the third quarter. And even though they're trailing, not abandoning the running game. People may call it an adjustment. I think it's just much more sticking to what works for you and continuing to have faith in it. And the running game is starting to pay off. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. Operating from the gun, Rich, and they're going to move it down the inside the 25. carry here for Robinson and not much maybe a yard down to the 23 they're trying to keep the drive going this will be play number eight it's third and two handing it off to Brown and brought down but not before they get it inside the 10 to the seven they're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal Offensive line right now really freeing up the rushing lanes on this drive. And we have to give them props. They've earned them. But these big runs that we're seeing, they don't result without everyone else being involved as well. Blocking on the perimeter has to take place downfield too. throw 
Rich. A quick throw knocked away. It's incomplete. That one was tipped up in the air and fortunately fell away for the defense because if the offense is able to grab that one, that's a short little jaunt into the end zone because there's not enough reaction time off of a tip ball for the defense to rally and make a tackle. They were very fortunate on that play. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Shaquille Barrett make that now four sacks for him in tonight's ball game. And on second and goal, they decide to throw it again, and this result is even worse. They take a sack. On first down, it was simply an incomplete pass. Not a good first two plays, beginning with first and goal. A big one coming in this divisional round playoff, third and goal. Looking to throw, Rich. That is caught at the seven yard line. 10 yards gets him closer, but now it's fourth and goal. Nice job understanding the situation. Third and long, kept the play in front of them and made the tackle. They gave up a good chunk of yardage, but it does force a fourth down. So on fourth down, Ron Rivera sends out the field goal unit from the right hash at a bit of a tight angle. And his kick is indeed good. And that will tie things at 17 all. So they come away from this opening drive of the third quarter with only three, but it does draw them even. Yeah, and that has to be job one, doesn't it? A touchdown definitely would have been nice. We know that. But here, you get back on even terms, and now you've got most of the second half to try and get yourself into a position to win. Here comes the Buccaneers offense. They get their first reps of the second half. And their three-point halftime lead gone now, back to a tie game. But, Charles, I don't imagine that changes too much for this offense. I would agree. I don't think it changes much at all, whether it's a three-point lead or a tie game. They know they have their work cut out for them. And they're looking for Godwin, but it's intercepted. And the Commanders are going to take possession of the football. they come onto the field. They'll have very good starting field position here as they try to break our tie, and they start first and 10. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Here's a give to Brown. They'll be and the ball on the 30, here's second and four. Right back to Brown. What a great effort there. He's going to get this inside the 15, and they'll spot it at the 13-yard line. Nice run. They get 17 there. Good for a commander's first down. No signal, and now they say he did not get in. He is stonewalled at the one. No gain on the play, and it's going to be second and goal. Brown is into the end zone. Touchdown, Washington. Well, wherever he is on the field, he is certainly slippery with a football in his hands, and he proved it right there. And normally moves like that aren't supposed to work this deep in the red zone because there's not enough space. Normally way more effective when you're working out in the open field. But here, incredible shiftiness, excellent contact balance, and he works his way into the end zone. Now 
Now the extra point try forthcoming. And they will take a seven-point lead now. Five plays there on that drive. And it ends with a one-yard touchdown run. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Taking it about the one. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. now this offense trying to change the script here a little bit, CD. Trailing on the scoreboard in the last time out on the very first play of the drive, they threw that interception. And you definitely saw his coaches, teammates come over to him on the sideline, trying to help him shake it off because in this game, his team is down right now. So it's important to make sure you get some confidence back for both the quarterback and the entire offense. Otherwise, those mistakes could continue to pile up. A give to the fullback on the dive. And he tries to power forward, but he will not get back to the line of scrimmage. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. Sometimes you read a defense, they can pass rush, and you see them on those sprinter stances. You think you can give that quick hitter to the fullback and have it go for seven, eight, nine yards, but not that time. They stuffed him before he could get back to the line of scrimmage. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. And he's got his man in stride, complete. And this will not be enough. On third and five, he only gets three. One of the money routes for any offense, the drag route. So tough to defend because the receiver can stop at any point and make himself available to the quarterback and get a completion. But I love the communication we saw there. All the defenders pointing out the receiver, where he was going, and then they're able to rally to the ball after the catch and stop him short of a first down. Here comes the Buccaneers punter now as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Fielded just inside the 20. So a good punt there, but a nice return of 11 yards. And it will be Washington football now with a first and 10. There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's looking sharp here so far in the third quarter, Charles. It appears that the halftime gave him a little bounce. He you know, came out, spring in his legs, a little pep in his step, and he's taken off and running really well in the third quarter. Sometimes we talk about how guys don't want halftime to come, and some guys, they're happy when that break gets there. You never know which way it's going to go. He's taking advantage of it in this one, though. He'll try again with the arm here on second down. Got a man, it's Diaby Brown complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. That one covers 24 yards, it's a first down. And they'll get him down after a pickup of eight, second and two. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They keep it on the ground. Again, it's Brown. And he is going to be stopped cold behind the line of scrimmage. He'll lose a yard on the play, so now they need three yards on third down. Sixty Eagles! 
Looking to throw. Rich. And a quick throw here. That's complete. And this is going to lead to another first down as the tackle's made at the Bucks 26. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. If you're going to blitz, likely going to leave you in man coverage with this guy, and that is less than ideal. It is because just about any offense that has an elite receiver, if you blitz and have him in man coverage, you're going to him, even if he has an elite defender on him, because he usually knows where the ball is before the defender does. On the handoff, this is Brown. And he's brought down, but not before a gain of 13, down to the 13. First and 10 in the red zone. Team now they work on first and ten. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. And he just throws this one away. Smart decision here this close to the end zone, and it brings up second down. Now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. Looking for McLaurin, and he's got him. And the Commanders are going to have a first and goal coming up. It's the completion, a little bit of run after catch as well to create the yardage that they got. But it is so tough to cover that route, the drag route, because they run it at varying speeds. Because the key is to create hesitancy on the defender's part. And he will take it in. Touchdown, Commanders. A great play there with his second touchdown of the night. And the Commanders go up by two touchdowns. Probably the week off hasn't hurt him one bit. Thousand yard rush in the regular season. Get his first touchdown here in the playoffs. Perhaps the week off energized him. A great article in the paper this morning basically saying that they would not have won the division without him. And he's not their only piece, but I think that's a fair statement. It's easy to say it this way. He's their main cop. Point after try, fourth coming. And the lead is up to 14. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it ends with a three-yard scoring run. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Taken at the goal line. And he won't get this to the 20-yard line as he's down at the 19. And Tampa Bay trots out there now. Over on the sideline, hoping to hit that reset button between possessions. Last time out, they had to punt it away. This time, hoping to finish this thing off in the end zone. They'll come out throwing here on first down. Got his man complete over the middle. It's Evans. Stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. They'll come up now on a second and long after the hold. Back to throw. That's complete to his receiver, Godwin. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 15. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. He's going to sling this deep downfield. And a penalty flag comes in as that one winds up incomplete. But the contact is going to move the ball well downfield. 